Well, today, if the message, we're going to finish up this series in Genesis chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. We're going to talk about somewhat of a controversial subject. I've never actually taught this in the pulpit in the church, you know, Sunday morning setting, I've taught in a different setting, but actually teaching this and preaching this, I can honestly say in the 20 years, I've never actually taught this subject in 20 years in the pulpit. Now, in Bible study, yes, but in the pulpit, no. And so, we're going to have a little bit of fun this morning. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man as on the image and the image of God. He created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Heavenly Father, Father, today I praise you and thank you once again for your word. I pray that we learn as your people that you graph it in. We learn that we can claim your covenant over our life. We can remember your covenant over our life and never forget the promises that you've given us. I thank you, Father, today for these people that would come out that would give you the first part of their week. And I thank you for their sacrifice, Lord. I pray that you bless them. I pray they receive that blessing wholeheartedly. God, we come today to receive your word, to not only give you praise and to thank you, Father, for all you've done, but to receive something of you today, to be spiritually fed today, Father. I'm asking, God, today that you allow us this opportunity, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would see in us a people that is ready for a move of God in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this final message this morning... In Genesis 1, 26 through 28, about dominating, having dominion over the earth. Uh, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about just learning how to have dominion over our own bodies. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the mind and how it's important that we should rule our own minds, have dominion over our minds. And last week, I think was a good, a good one, a doozy, I guess you could say. Um, got my tongue twisted there because we talked about the tongue and have power and having power over the tongue. How important it is that we learn to rule that very destructive part of our body. But it can also be used for good too, can it? We can also claim it using our mouths and proclaiming God and preaching the gospel and claiming His covenant over our life vocally. Amen? Well, today we're going to talk about something a little more, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm thankful for the younger crowd that's here this morning as well as the crowd that's not as young, okay? But this... We're going to talk about some generational things today. We're going to talk about human sexuality. And some of your parents are like, oh, we've got to get my kids out of here. No, we're not going to talk anything that would be un, uh, not be uh, proper, appropriate, thank you. Um, but just to give you some information, but to, and stick with me if you will this morning. At first, it's going to seem a little weird. It's going to seem a little different. Uh, but stick with me because I really, I believe God's given me a message to deliver you this morning. And it will turn from teaching to preaching, I promise you, as far as I have been convicted about this message. Okay? Now, this understanding of what human sexuality is about, first of all, you need to know this. That as you see in the original creation, God blessed them in verse 28. And we'll get to that in a minute, but I want to read it once again. He said, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. He is already before, now this you have to understand, this is not Genesis 3, this is Genesis 1. If you all read Genesis 3, you have seen that that is where sin entered the earth and entered the universe. Okay? <laughs> sin is not here. God blessed them, and he said, Be fruitful and multiply. What does that mean? Have children. Husbands and wives having children. That's what that means. Human sexuality. Okay, first of all, we need to make some things clear. And I think some of this stuff is going to be like preaching to the choir. Okay? But it needs to be brought out in order to, for this message to make some sense to you. Okay? Um, men and women, boys and girls, 
dead since the dawn of creation. But for some reason, we have a problem with that today. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Just get on Facebook in case you don't know. You have 50 options of what you can be and what you think you might be. Is that not the craziest thing you ever heard in your life? Well, I'm not sure if I'm a boy. I'm not sure if I'm a girl. I'm not sure if I'm a little of both. I just don't know just yet. And there's even an option there. Well, on the Facebook, on wherever you set up your page, of, you can say you don't know if you're a man or a woman or a boy or a girl. Now, to all of us here in the Bible Belt, part of the Bible Belt, all of us here in Southern Illinois, that just seems a little bit odd. But I'm telling you, folks, that is what is happening in our nation. That's what's happening in our world. This total acceptance of anything and everything, anything goes, we need to understand what's going on, okay? This is no accident. God purposely made a distinction between the two. He purposely made boys the way they are and purposely made girls the way they are. Now, there's some really interesting stories. You remember, now some of you younger crowd are not going to know this, but when Toys R Us came out, now I'm not cursing Toys R Us, I'm not saying if you're Toys R Us, you're a bad person, but when Toys R Us started putting out toys back, even way back, some of you all, I didn't know this time existed, but way back in the 70s, they put out some toys that were gender-friendly. Um, they were, um, I don't even know if that's the right word or not, but they wanted to make it to where a boy or a girl could buy it and feel comfortable playing with it, okay? And so they had come up with some crazy ideas, I thought, some silly ideas. They wanted boys, now think about this, John. Think about this, Angus. Can you imagine, you guys weren't born in the 70s, were you? What? Was you born in the 70s? Okay. I thought, I thought you was like an 80s baby or something, no? Late 70s? Okay. All right. Can you imagine, as a boy, the toy industry wanting you to play the dollhouse? Oh, I love it. You love it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what'd you do with it? You blew it up. Now that's, that's, that's a boy right there. And what they did, they, they made these dollhouses, and they these what they found was these boys got these dollhouses, but they made like wrestling rings out of them with you know the WWF figures and all that kind of stuff. It was like crazy. They didn't understand how come they couldn't play like girls play. Why? Is it because there's something wrong with girls? No. Girls are the way they are for a purpose, for a reason. God designed it that way. Girls were designed by God to be girls. Now, this has nothing to do with the tomboy issue. There's a lot of girls out there, tomboys, that want to get out and run and play in the mud, too. It has nothing to do with that. But it's the whole idea of them trying to force an issue on us and trying to tell us that there's no difference between the two when it is obvious that there is. Amen? It was designed by God. God created them, it says here, human sexuality, He created male and female. Okay? Now, however, in even this creation, man has found ways, and this is really the whole underlying um, problem that you're going to find in this message and what you'll see throughout the ages. The whole problem is rebellion. Man has found ways to rebel against God all through the ages. Now, we're seeing it even more glorified and advertised in our day, but it's been going on since the dawn of time. Man has found ways to rebel against God and His created order. You wonder why these things are an issue whenever you see it being accepted. Here's some ways that man has in our day, what we see in rebellion. Some of you are like, are going to be offended at this, but this is rebellion against God. Transgender, people who wanted to have a different identity, that is rebellion against God. Transvestites, that's rebellion against God. Wanting to, that's totally against the Word of God. Homosexuality is rebellion against God. Okay? Um, Fornication is rebellion against God. Adultery is a rebellion against God. It's created order that God has set up that man has found ways to rebel against His order and trying to become their own king. Now, the created order, as in our day we have a hard time understanding it, but the scripture says here that God created them male and female. Now, if you go to chapter 2, you'll find that where it says that when man saw that this woman was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, 
And then, then there is where marriage is instituted. And it says, Therefore a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. And they too shall become one. Jesus even quoted it in Matthew chapter 19. He quoted the very same thing in response to their questions about divorce and, and things like that. But it's obvious that this is how God has set it up. He created order. Man was created first, then the woman, and then they were created to be together, to be married, to not separate, to have a lot of children. That is God's blessing. It's obvious in here in the Scriptures. Now, God blessed it. He said it's good. The problem is, even in human sexuality where God is blessed, man still finds ways to disobey or misbehave misuse what God has said is good. Now, this is where we do not find a lot of teaching on human sexuality in the church because we have been taught that it's bad. We have been taught that it's dirty. We have been taught bad things. Why? Because of what we see on the television. What has been taught to us. And oh, that's, that's nasty. That's not good. But folks, God has blessed human sexuality when it's in its proper form and the proper use. Okay? Now, what we find in Leviticus chapter 18 is where God strictly forbids the misuse of what God has blessed, the misuse of human sexuality. And I'm just going to go over a list. Again, just stick with me for a few minutes. It's a little bit of teaching. For some of you, it might be preaching to the choir. But maybe for some of you, this might be kind of a light bulb moment, okay? an awakening moment. He says in Leviticus chapter 18, I'm just going to sum it up. If you want to get a precise reading, you need to get out the Bible for yourself and read it. In Leviticus 18, it says, sex with close relative, like a sister or a brother, okay? Any close relative is forbidden, all right? Um, even with their spouses, with the in-laws, it is forbidden, all right? And that's some of you are like, it sounds kind of crazy, but that goes on, okay? All this stuff goes on. Even when it's forbidden, it says here, well, uh, when a woman is in her customary period, okay, in that purity part, it is forbidden. I know that sounds kind of crazy. It's like, what's way out there? What's that all about? But it is forbidden. It's misuse, okay? Homosexuality is forbidden. It is actually called an abomination. Bestiality is